I am replacing my inverter battery switches, my manual Blue C battery switches, with a Blue C remote battery switch. Uh, and this is an electrical switch that's hooked. You hook the uh, cables that you want for this switch to connect and disconnect and then you can run this long wire back and have and have a nice little switch like this it's lighted uh, on and off and it has this nice protective cover so you don't mistakenly uh, press it one way or the other when you're um, using it uh, and here's the wiring diagram basically that I created for this blue C remote battery switch part number 7700 um, so it's basically five wires so I and and they recommend 16 gauge so I bought a six stranded 16 gauge um, multiple cable um, I couldn't find um, five so I bought six and I just cut the one that I'm not going to use back, so uh, I don't have to worry about, you know, getting mixed up. And then here's the wires coming from the Blue C battery switch. So now I just need to make the splices to connect the long five-wire cable to the short five-wire uh, pigtail that comes out of uh, the Blue C battery switch. So, uh, what I like to do is I'm going to use solder, uh, little solder connectors, and then I'm going to cover that with a piece of heat shrink, and then ultimately I have a larger piece of heat shrink that will be sliding all over, over top of all the spliced wires. So, let me uh, get my um, heat gun, and I'll come back. Now, when you are doing this, you want to see the ring of solder. There's a ring, a metal ring of solder right there. And when you see that melt, that's when you know you've made a good connection. So, let's, uh, I'm going to, I've never used my heat gun for this before, so let's see how it works. Then I like to add another piece of heat shrink over where you've heated it, heated the solder to melt because um, sometimes, you know, you, you have to heat it so hot to get that little piece of solder to melt that it melts what is supposed to be your heat shrink. So it doesn't really, you know, solidly cover the wire and I don't want the connections laying on top of each other and maybe, um, you know, heating up. So I just put another layer of heat shrink just to make sure I have a good sealed connection. Okay, so let's try another one. Here you can see I've got the strands overlapped on each other. And I'm using a little torch this time. And you'll see this when it melts you'll see it spread. There it went. It might be hard to see in the video, but you see it's just like liquid. All right, so I've got all my connections made, and now I can slide my 
uh, heat shrink over the top of all those wires and heat shrink it down and I'll have a nice finished looking uh, cable. I'll come back and show you. Okay, so here's my finished uh, wiring bundle, nice and neat. And now I'm going to be installing the Blue Sea switch on this wall because I want it to operate this inverter. So I will get on with that and show you what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got my Blue Sea switch installed. I've got my um, wire run and it's coming out at the top and I'm and it, as you can see it's running over to where it's going to go up into the floor uh, so I can put the switches right by the door so um, my blue C switch is installed and now I just have to do the wiring so here I am in my step area where I have pulled my blue wire for my inverter ignition control and the five-stranded wire that I'll be using, cable I'll be using to connect my Blue C remote battery switch. Now I had already, when I installed, initially I installed my first Xantrex inverter and one lithium bat, uh, lithionics lithium battery, I installed a Blue C switch for remote battery switch for that inverter. But then I didn't do it when I installed my Kisei. Um, I just thought it would be easier, you know, not to do all the wiring, which it was. But it, it, I really would like something convenient, more convenient uh, now that I'm redoing everything. So I'm going to put my second switch, um, you know, right next, well, in this area. I've got a, a two-switch switch holder that I'll be cutting a hole out and clipping my two uh, switches into and then I'll mark them inverter one and inverter two. So um, I'm basically going to be doing all my connections to the house battery switch uh, battery side um, terminal. Well no not battery side it doesn't have to be the battery side it'll be the um, switched side of the house battery switch. So um, that way uh, my inverter control power and my inverter switches will be active whenever I turn on the house battery switch. Okay, I have to install this dual cover uh, switch box basically um, so I can snap my blue C switches into it. So I marked out a place there. I'm going to use a little hacksaw and cut that out to install that little switch housing. I'll be back. Okay, um, that little cover fit in very well and once I put my fire extinguisher back it's a nice tight fit so I'll get on with that. Here is the wiring diagram I used for making all my connections to the blue C switch. Okay, this looks complicated, but it's not really. I'm using uh, fuse holders um, for each connection. I have one fuse holder going for the inverter ignition control. So that's a fuse line. And then I have another fuse holder that is, um, oh, here it is. That is the power power supply. Uh, you need two, two powered lines for the switch. There's five terminals on this switch. Uh, two powered lines. One goes for the light and one goes for the actual switch power. And then um, I put a, a piggyback terminal so I can piggyback the grounds together. And then I just put, you know, regular female spade turn connectors. So I'll have the five wires that go on these spades. And um, 
um, the ground from the two switches will be ground together. And so now I just need to put my switches in and plug all the wires up and I'll have my switches back in. So I'll do that and come back. Okay, using my wiring diagram, I numbered the terminals just like the diagram. And then I numbered my wires to correspond with the connections correspond with the connections um, so each one of these is numbered or this way oh there's my number so each one of those is numbered as is the switch so now I can plug them all up and push my switch in okay now I've got everything plugged up and it's just simply okay you can simply get the little thing lined up in the opening and you just push it in you hear it snap and now it's locked in okay so now both of my blue C switches are uh, hooked, are connected are installed and now I'm gonna uh, label them inverter one inverter two I might even make a little little bit legend here to tell which what is running from each inverter so uh, now the only thing that I have left to do is attach the power cable uh, inside to this battery to this battery switch terminal right there and then I'll have uh, power whenever my house battery switch is turned on so I'll get that connected I'll get all my wires tidied tidied up and I'll be done all right so I've tidied up my wiring and you can see how everything's connected from this side so and I've got it hooked up down here to the battery switch so we are done with the uh, inverter ignition control wiring and the blue C remote battery switch wiring. So now I have remote switches to disconnect the inverter, both inverters from the batteries um, when I want to turn it off and then reconnect it, turn it on, um, turn the inverters on anytime, you know, I'm using it and I want to when I'm using my batteries. So, a nice addition. I really like these little slidey covers because they protect um, whichever way you have your uh, switches on so you don't accidentally, say, turn it off when, uh, you know, you were manipulating the battery switch down here or turn it on by accident. I always keep the ons covered because I definitely don't want to accidentally turn my uh, connect my inverters to my batteries unless I know that's you know I'm ready to do that okay so I'm done with this project